Today we're using some paper edging to transform the backyard from this to this. I just finished enclosing the area under my deck and it looks great. But the landscaping, well, <laughs> what landscaping? Now we're gonna class this joint up a little bit here and add a garden bed with paper edging along with some raised planters and a walkway. Now with my area defined in my head, I could start laying it out with some stakes and string line. I drove a stake down near the stairs and I ran the line down the front edge of the garden bed, which ended up being right around 65 inches from the deck. And my house juts out a couple feet past the deck on the side, and this made a great visual stop for the bed. So I ran another line from the corner of the house up to meet that first one at a right angle. Now I was trying to get this perfectly lined up because you know, engineer and all, but you just need to get it close <laughs> because then I sprayed the line with spray paint, which isn't exactly a model of precision. To get a nice rounded corner, I measured in from both sides of the string about 15 inches at the corner. Now I could get a nice pivot point and then I used my tape measure as a guide for the spray can. Now you might be able to just do this by eye, but I kind of draw and spray paint like a five-year-old. So I do need the guidance to keep it presentable. So I followed the line down the front of the deck to the other stake to round off the bed on that end. And we decided to end the bed here before this tree. So I had to dig out a big clump of daffodils first. And these things are just a mess. Only like two of them bloom anymore. So don't get mad at me for digging them up. I used the same trick here to make the corner, but I made sure to put the raised planter in place so I could see how the spacing would look there in between the edge and the planter. And now I could commit to the layout and dig out the edge with a spade shovel. But instead of pulling up the dirt at this point, I was just getting a good crisp line, plus or minus five tenths of a degree. All right, I established the edge with my straight shovel. Now I'm gonna go back and use the digging shovel. And I've gotta remove at least two inches off this entire area. So I'm gonna take the top layer of the grass off and throw it on here on the tarp. If you're ever digging in your yard, make sure you're throwing the dirt on a tarp because getting it out of the grass later will be a huge mess. After we do that, then we can start grading it and put a string line in here and really start leveling it out and getting it right where we need it. And this is the first of many times that you're gonna see me digging in this video. And it's going to look about a thousand times easier than it really was. So these are the bricks I'm gonna be using, seven inches long by three and a half inches wide, and they are one and three quarters inch thick. So I need to put these around the edge, but underneath each of these, I need two inches of paver stone and an inch of sand to get a nice base. So all together, that's right around five inches. So I'm gonna dig a five inch trench all the way around the edge, and that's gonna set the stones in place and make sure that they have a good base. I used the aptly named trenching shovel to dig out the small trench. It's a lot easier to use the full width of a shovel versus digging in from the sides with a wider one. And to help me quickly gauge the depth of the trench, I made a five inch mark on a scrap of wood. I also put a two inch mark on there for the next section that I'll be digging. I'm setting the pavers flush with the ground so it'll be easy to roll bikes and lawnmowers across it. I used the stick up against the sidewall to see where it hit on that top edge of the dirt to gauge where I was at. And I just got to digging. into a drain pipe here and I just cut it off before the trench. You know, I hope I made the right decision, but I guess we'll figure that out later. All right, we've got the five inch trench and now I'm gonna level this part. And what I wanna do is have it two inches deep, but also I need to slope it from the bottom here so these doors were still open all the way to this front edge. I'll run some string line in between here and there, and then I can use my little stick at the two inch mark to make sure that this is all dug down so we have enough space to build it back up with a stone. Now, after laying out the string, I could see that I had a lot more to remove on the front edge. It was like that pretty much the whole length of the bed. 
And at this point, I also realized I was just causing myself more work by putting the dirt on the tarp first. And I'm a big proponent of work smarter, not harder. So I started going directly into my little rolling dump cart here, which by the way, this thing is amazing. It's way more stable and maneuverable than a wheelbarrow. I give this thing two shuffle blistered thumbs up. And since this was coming up on two days of the tarp being in the grass, I decided I'd better move it so that I didn't have a great looking garden bed with a huge patch of dead grass in front of it. <sighs> but after working my way around the bed, I had a pretty decent base layer to work with. Okay, so just when you thought the digging was done, actually we've got some more to do. I'm going to be putting in a couple of these pavers, so I'm going to do two rows of three of these and that's going to lead right into the under deck storage. So I'm going to mark that out with some spray paint and then dig that down to five inches and then, then we will be ready to put the stone dust in. And I got to say I'm ready for that because I'm tired. <laughs> we'll keep going. I'm beginning to feel a little bit like Andy Dufresne's digging my tunnel for years. But we're getting closer to freedom. After raking and tamping down the soil to get a fairly level base, I put down some weed control fabric. Now this will be really important where I just have the rocks so that I'm not going to be picking weeds out of there all the time. Get everything cleared out and the fabric liner is down to stop the weeds. Now I can start putting in the base, which I'm going to put in the rock base for the pavers. And I'll put that along the trench and all in this area right here where the pavers are going to go. Now all the rock, sand, and stones that I'll be using are bagged from the home center. You can definitely get it cheaper though if you buy it in bulk from a landscaping company. It's just a trade-off of ease of use and getting the right amount of material. Since buying a few more bags of stone, <coughs> poor planning, uh, is a lot easier than going out to get another yard of gravel. After pouring in the base, I tamped it down with a 4x4 post since my large tamper won't fit in the narrow trench. As I was filling the trench, I spread the bags into the walkway area here as well. And remember that work smarter not harder? <laughs> well that's me walking back and forth around the dump cart a half dozen times. Just getting in my workout. I also added a 3 inch line on my wood scrap and I was aiming at that level which would give me an inch of sand and then the pavers on top to be level with the ground. The big tamper made short work of compacting the stone in the walkway. And this part is important too, as it gives a solid foundation to the pavers so they won't heave or settle over time. Adding the stone and tamping it down in layers helps it get nice and tight so you're not trying to compact two or three inches of stone all at once by hand. I worked my way around the side of the deck and I filled in the trench and the small step stone recesses. And now I could get to the fun part, laying the pavers in place. Now the ground was pretty uneven around the tree there, so I set up another string line to help give me a visual reference for setting the stones. I transferred a bag of sand into a five gallon bucket to make it easier to manage and pour out. And then I could put in a bed of sand that was deep enough to bring the bricks up to the string line. And this is my first time laying pavers like this, and I didn't screed out or level the sand perfectly here. I opted to just kind of lay the bricks in and then pound them flush with a mallet. I also started in the middle and then I worked my way back towards the deck so that I could use the middle pavers to level the back ones because I couldn't hit that string line all the way to the back because of that concrete footer on the deck. And after laying that straight line of bricks, I had to start making some adjustments. So I'm getting to the corner now and I've got a couple options here. So I could just go ahead and curve that and leave a little gap in between the edges of the bricks, but I do have a wet tile saw. So I'm gonna go ahead and use it. Now you don't have to, you can leave it open, but I'm just gonna basically stack these down here, see where they overlap, draw a pencil line and then cut them to fit. Hopefully I can get it right, but it'll definitely look better than a larger gap. To mark the cuts, I laid a brick on top of the last one installed, making sure that the back corners were lined up. Then I angled it to fit the curve and I marked a line where it overlapped the brick beneath it. Now using that line, I can make a quick cut on the wet tile saw, which this thing cuts through these stones like butter. And the next stones are a little trickier because you need to make a cut on both sides. I used the same method, lining up the back corners, and then I marked a cut line. 
but I'm cutting the bricks on both sides this time. So whatever that overlap was between them, I would cut half off of each brick, because if I cut the full overlap off each one, then there'd be a big gap left in between. I repeated the process and worked my way around the curve, making the cuts and then setting the stones in place. Now, leveling them on a downward slope around a curve was a bit tricky, but I just made sure it stayed fairly flat and I was gauging it with my 2x4 and trying to transition from that string line on the side to the one in the front. And but once I hit the front edge, things went really fast. I would lay down a bed of sand and smooth it out with my trowel or the 2x4 and then set the papers in place. Then I just smack them like whack-a-mole until they submitted and were level on my line. When I got to the other corner, I put the side string line back up so that I could transition around the curve to the side of the house. Now the last brick in that run needed to be cut, so I figured I'd try splitting it with a cold chisel just to show you an alternative way to cut the pavers. I scored a line across it and then kept hitting it with my chisel along that line until it snapped. And let's just say this method is not as precise or as clean as the tile saw. I'd probably recommend using a circular saw with a masonry blade over this method, especially for angled cuts. All the pavers are installed now and they are in that bed of sand and you saw I was compressing them down there. So they're pretty solidly in there, but they could move side to side. So I'm gonna use some polymeric sand and that goes in between the joints. It's kind of like a mastic that'll harden after I put some water on it. It's gonna help to hold those together and resist them from moving around. Now, honestly, this is probably the worst use for polymeric sand since the connections between the stones are very minimal. And it's not gonna be nearly as effective as it would be if they were touching along the long edge. I used a little chip brush to help move the sand into the gaps and I tapped the bricks with my shovel to help the sand settle all the way down. And to try to give it just a little more oomph and sticking power, I did build up a little beveled layer on the inside of the bricks and I also filled in the gap between the dirt wall and the stones there. Now, I honestly don't know if this is gonna help at all, but I figured it was worth a shot and it was better than nothing. Now to activate the polymeric sand and get it to harden, you have to wet it down. Basically, you're just trying to get it fully wet without washing it out of the joints. But before moving on, I added a little bit more weed barrier to the back of that main bed to cover the spots that I missed before because I ran out of fabric. Where are my clouds at? Now I can start laying in the large 16 by 16 pavers. I'm gonna do six of them right here in the center to give me some easy access in and out of the storage area for things like my lawnmower and things that have wheels on it. So I'm gonna lay down the sand bed and then start laying those in. I dumped a few bags in and I leveled it out with the back of a hard rake to get it spread out before leveling it off. Now, I was feeling pretty confident about my ability to just screed this out level by eye. So, I did. I mean, how hard could it be to get it close to level, right? And after meticulously eyeballing it, I laid down the 2x4 along the center line to act as my guide for the pavers. I put a stone on either side and then I threw a level on them. <laughs> Apparently, my pupil level is not as good as the real deal. And after a few attempts at adjusting the pavers, it was clear this was not the way. Mistakes were made. All right, <laughs> that didn't work very well. I thought I could just screed it and kind of do it by eye, but uh, moving that 16 by 16 paver, it's not like these little bricks where you can just pound them and they move. Uh, the 16 by 16 is a lot harder to actually push down into the sand uh, because of all the surface area. So I'm gonna do it what I should have done in the beginning. I thought I could get away with it. I'm gonna put some pipe in the sand and screed off of that and get a nice level surface so then I can just put them down and have minimal uh, back and forth and having to adjust them. Do it right. Do it light, do it wrong, do it long. I sunk the conduit pipes into the sand and then I leveled them off one another so that they both had the same slope from front to back. And then I added in more sand and I used the 2x4 to screed it flat across the whole surface. And I added in sand whenever there was low spots. Now this is the way. I wonder if the Mandalorian ever uses his Bezkar spear for screeding, but that worked pretty well. 
The second go-around worked way better, and screeding the sand made this part easy as I could just lay down the pavers and make some very minor adjustments to get them level with each other. Now next I brought over the raised planters that we're using. We opted for metal versus wood just for some longevity. I cut out the liner in the center of the planter so that the veggies that we're putting in can have access to the soil beneath. And then I dug out some soil on the backside to make the planter a little bit more level. And now it was finally time to add in the rocks. And I'm using a river rock, or technically a river pebble here for these. It matches the style that's under the deck already. And these are a bit smaller, so they're gonna fit nicely in between the stones. I worked my way around the bed and I also installed the side pavers during that process. And while I'm doing that, I wanna thank today's sponsor, WD-40 Company. If you want your yard tools to last a long time, you need to properly care for them. And when you rinse them off with water, it can lead to flash rusting, which can turn into deep pitted rust and a weak tool. But you can use WD-40 multi-use product to give the tools a quick spray to prevent this. It drives out moisture, protects the exposed metal, and it lubricates moving parts. And the Trigger Pro non-aerosol can makes spraying large areas easy. But if you have deep rust already, like the shovel, you can use WD-40's specialist rust remover soak to get rid of it. I poured some on a rag and let it sit overnight on the shovel. In the morning, the rust was dissolved and I sprayed on some multi-use product to keep it rust free. It worked great. Check the links below in the description to pick up either of these products and a big thanks to WD-40 Company for sponsoring this video. After the rocks were all in, we filled up the planters with a combo of garden soil, compost, and perlite. And we're trying our hands at vegetable gardening for the first time, so if you have any tips, leave them in the comments down below. Now the garden bed turned out great and the paver edging really defines the space and holds the rocks there in place nicely. Then the deck skirting looks even better with this nice walkway up to it and this is a huge upgrade from where we started just a few weeks ago. If you enjoyed that video, I've got a video on how I did this deck skirting from an old fence. You can check it out right up there. I want to give a big thank you to all those folks that have been joining the Builders Club and I'll catch you guys over on the next video. Where are my clowns at?